everybody. Thank you for joining me today for another Tuesday with Grace. This is part two of my extreme paper piecing. And I'm so excited to show you the process of putting it on your quilt to begin quilting. Um, it's really quite easy. There are a few steps that we need to take, but the first thing I want to remind you of is to get your checklist going. Your checklist is your pre-quilting checklist. Um, and this pre-quilting checklist, if you'll go through it and make your own checklist and make it adaptable to you and how you quilt, will help you eliminate mistakes, run around finding the tools that you need. And so mine is to, my number one thing is I'm going to gather up all the things that I need to begin quilting. So you see I have my stack of my hexagons that I've finished and then I have my paper template because I'm going to draw my design on it. I have my rulers. I have my stencil spray that's going to help stabilize my pieces. I have my marking tools, my little snippers, pins, extra bobbins, my scissors. And then over here, because I'm going to be pulling my machine down here and changing my feet, I have all my feet my foot, my tool to change my foot, and my height gauge. So I make sure that it's the right height. Okay, now I've done my thread and everything, and now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna move my machine, my machine back and forth, front to back, back and forth, okay? So that I can make sure that there's nothing that's going to hinder my quilting. This is just really important. Just move it side to side with your foot towards the back. And then you'll know that nothing's back there. And then, just to make sure that there's nothing coming forward, pull the machine forward. And remember, I have my ruler base on. So, my ruler base is gonna hit and stop my quilting or the back of my throat, because I'm using a Cunic 15. It's not a 19 or a 21, so I only have so much area to quilt. And you can see where it stops because I'm hitting the back right here. Um, this is all the further I can quilt until I roll. All right, so just make sure that you're marking that so that you don't, try to extend forward and mess up your design. Okay, so we're just gonna kinda of make a little mark and I'm going to make it up above and so I'm just gonna let this know right here that this is all the further I can quilt. Can't go past that point, okay? Because I don't wanna mess up my designs. Uh, I don't wanna unpick. I hate unpicking, okay. So, and then now that I've checked everything, I wanted to talk to you about setting up your top or your backing when it's a pieced backing for quilting, okay? So I'm just gonna reach down here and pull this out okay, to show you. Okay, lots of times I, I get a lot of quilters who email me and say, oh, my quilt's not rolling correctly. Uh, what, how, how is that and why is it tighter on one edge, a little looser on the other side and really tight in the middle and it's sagging. So. Part of that is, is maybe you have a piece backing and you haven't cut your selvages off the edges of your fabric before you've sewn it together and you've just sewn down it. Now those selvages are really tightly woven and they're just not useful when you're piecing it back together. So make sure you're cutting your selvages off and when you're sewing your two pieces or three pieces or however many pieces together, you're using just slightly larger stitch. You don't want a teeny tiny stitch because you know teeny tiny stitches will kind of make it um, pucker and become closer together. It's kind of like a selvage. And so if you will do a little larger stitch and iron open your seam, it will lay flatter and a lot nicer. So make sure that you're doing that for all your piece backings. Um, and, and for, we're not using a backing today. We're just using this as my top. So I put it on and I ironed it all flat and everything. And so now I'm ready to go. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to do a little test piece and make sure you've got your sewing machine threaded correctly and everything's okay. Now see, I felt something catch right here, but I'm not gonna be quilting over here, so I'm okay. I just wanna make sure that I'm 
over here in this area and when I get over there I'm going to retest my machine to make sure I can make sure it's moving every direction front to back side to side as I move along but I changed my foot I'm using my quilt perfect ruler foot to tack it down and make my markings and that was one of the first things that I did so notice how I uh, tacked it down I went along the top to tack all three together um, I have two layers of batting here so I've tacked them all down and I used my foot to do that so I moved my foot right along the edge of my rail just holding it there and then sewed right straight across and that gives me a nice straight line so that I can line up my design now I put it on base stitch I I'm using the short base stitch okay and I started tacking it down I want you to pin these together so you have all your little seams together and then you're going to spray baste and I spray baste and you can see it's a little tacky right there but it won't leave any residue or anything like that and then you can just spray baste again let me just tell you how easy this is and it's really nice and it really helps to stabilize it so it's not going to move on you or go anywhere as you're tacking it down so I'm just going to move right across the edge here I'm going to start on this side because I've already tacked down these and you can use your ruler if you want but we don't have to and notice I've made my little um, markings from this point to this point this point to this point this is going to help me when I start drawing my design out so I'm just going to move along the edge and I am in base mode and I notice it's going to you want it the closer together you move it the slower you move it the closer together the stitches are just so that you know that okay and then if you come to the end and you want to tack that little corner down turn it off then turn it on and it gives you that nice little stitch and then you can just keep going and like I said you could use the ruler if you wanted but I'm just going right next to the edge and tacking it down and notice I have I'm coming down here I want to turn that off and I'm going to kind of pull it as I move in Okay, I'm right there to that corner. I'm just going to come up here, turn it off, turn it on to stabilize that stitch and go right up that one. Now, if you want them close together, you could go back and forth. One stitch, one stitch. Pulling those two seams together. That's kind of nice, too. So there are a lot of ways that you can tack it together using the base stitch. See how that pulls those together doing that? I just want to show you different ways and then it's totally up to you to quilt and put it on and do what how you want to do it so now I'm going to go come along this edge and I really like to make my little pointers come along so I know what I'm doing so I can see the direction that I'm going and then I'm turning it off and on and I'm going to come back this way and come down now if I had the ruler on the edge, and let me just show you with the ruler because it works really well. And you could go along the bottom edge, but I'm not going to on this one, but I just wanted to show you. So now I want to show you how I made my little um, hexagon design with my little um, 60 degree triangles here because this will help me when I am drawing out part of my design. So I just drew it with a piece of uh, my marking pencil and I like the chalk mark marking pencils and um, they just make it easier for you to get it off. I've used the water soluble pencils, I've used several different kinds. These are my favorites so far. Um, if I find something and maybe you could email me, email me Carla with the K, K-A-R-L-A at graceframe.com and tell me what marking tools you like to use when you're quilting because I'd really love to hear and I really want to experiment to let you know what we find. So if you'll email me, I'd love to hear from you. So now I'm just, notice I'm just a quarter of an inch away because this is a quarter of an inch offset and I'm using my little pointer here to point me in the direction all the way along the line that I've marked. Okay, and I'm just gonna go up and down. Keep going. 
Now you could do base stitch a couple different ways. So if you have a machine that does not have a base stitch, another way to do a base stitch is to lower your SPIs. That's your stitches per inch. So if I lowered mine and I was in, let's go back into precise mode or manual mode or whatever mode you want to go into. And I'm going to just, you could either tap on this screen because this is a 15 Pro, or you could use your buttons here and you can lower the SPI to the lowest setting. I believe ours is four. All right. And then I can use that and I'm just going to go along this edge again and just kind of show you what that looks like. It's just a big old stitch. See? Just like that. Very easy to unpick and maybe that's the kind of stitch you want rather than using the base stitch. You're welcome to use it however you want to. Okay, so now I've got this tack down. I have one more to do and let me give it a little tug. So when I want to move from one section to the other and I really don't want to pull up my thread and cut, I will just pull and tug right here to give me a little excess thread and now I'm just going to go as fast as I can, making a larger stitch across, using my little pointer on the marking to just move across. There we go. Okay, so there's my other base stitch. Okay, so now you notice a couple of ways to base. Okay, so let's jump in. Now that we've got this tacked down, and I would do this one, but if I come down this one, I'm gonna hit the back of the machine, and I don't really wanna mess that up. So I'm not really worried about this. Everything is together. It's stabilized, and it's looking pretty darn good. So this is where I'm going to cut my threads. Okay, so let's talk about the design that we're gonna do. So there's a couple different ways that you can do it. You can use your Wonder Foot, and I have found since the last time I did this that it's easier to work from the center out, okay? So when you're making your design, let's do our design first and then let's go around and do our edges. Um, just really important when you're, that's a rule of thumb from hand quilting on so it gets all those wrinkles and puckers out. So I am going to use um, my quarter inch Wonderfoot, and I'm just going to show you what it does, okay? And I'm going to go along the edges of my design. And so as I use my Wonderfoot, okay, it's going to offset my needle a quarter of an inch in. And I'm going to use these markings here as I move up. And when I get my needle to that thread right there in the center, it's time for me to turn and go the other direction and move on just like that. And when my needle gets to this mark here, then it's time for me to go down. I just want you to practice that before we put the foot on so that you understand what the Wonder Foot will do because it will turn on you and if you will practice it first, you will have a better result because it, it, it's very engaging and it's a lot of fun. Um, and then you can put your other foot in, insert in you don't even have to change the foot. You can just put the other insert in and then just go right along the edge. Um, okay, another thing that we're going to do and talk about after, I, since I've got it all marked, is my design, okay? So what I've done is on the pattern, we've given you an actual size template that you can print off that works on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And I just want you to print off some extras and practice to your heart's content. You don't have to use the designs that I'm going to show you. You can come up with your own, which I hope you do because I love it when you make these your own. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler here and I'm just gonna make my markings so that I can see. Now I'm not gonna have these markings <laughs> They're not going to be sewn into the design. They're just markings to help me accurately move through my pattern or my, de my design that I'm going to make. So it'll help me make it more even and precise, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to line up this corner with this corner, this corner with this corner, and this with this. And I'm going to 
draw a line from each of those little sections. Okay, so that's my first one. I'm going to do my X first just to show you. And then I'm going to go across. And this, doing this, will give me six 60 degree triangles. That's how your hexagon's made. See? Those perfect little triangles. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark in about two inches and make from this line right here two inches and go across each of these. Okay, so I'm just going to use my two inch mark. This is going to help me as I'm sewing out my pattern and give me a boundary, um, which is really important um, when you're drawing. It's going to help me make it more accurate. I'm just going to use that to go around. See, I'm just making another little hexagon, but I'm just using my ruler as my guideline. And you can make a whole bunch of these and try different designs. Uh, that's what I do. I sit and doodle so I understand how the design is going to work. I have my boundaries. So I'm going to just set it here. I'm going to show you the design. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to come down. I'm going to make a loop and come back up. Okay? And I'm just going to go all the way around, and you're going to practice this over and over and over again. And you can even draw it out one time and then trace over that time and time again. So this is what I'm going to do. Just remember, my hand's a little wonky. It's a little stiff from being broken, but I'm getting back. See, the movement's there. Um, so I'm just going to come down. And I'm going to just keep going all the way around this, okay? I mean, you can turn it, but you're not going to be able to turn it on your quilt. But it's much easier to do it on the quilt. See this pretty design? How much fun that is? And notice, okay. I'm coming up out of there, but it's giving me enough to make that loop. Okay, so you could stop here if you wanted to and just make that design. It turned out really nice, okay? But make sure your points meet up right here and right here and just keep practicing. Or you can do one more. So we can come down and make one more and we could do a half an inch in from our design and go across. Okay. If we wanted to. I'm leaving this to your discretion. However you want to do it. I do not care. I did it three quarters. Sorry. That's okay. You get the measuring right. Make sure you're using your markings on there. There, and go around. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like. Uh, let me go all the way around it because I want you to see what it looks like. You know I'm running out of time. time. Time just gets eaten when you're doing what you love so much. <laughs> and I wish I had more hours in the day. Okay. All right, so there's my next design. And then I'm just going to start back up here at the top, do the same design. But now I'm just going to make another one. And it's a double loop. And then you're just going to keep going all the way across. Keep going around. Keep going around. Keep going around. I forget what I'm doing sometimes, so I have to, this is, it's really important to practice your directions. But see how pretty that is? 
So keep practicing that. You can use the one, you can use the two, you can make it your own. You don't even have to use this design. You, another way you could do it would, would be just to make your 60 degree triangles, okay? Really important for you to make sure that your design will be accurate. But I don't need to show you how to quilt. I just want to show you ways to quilt, okay? So you can keep going and doing your 60, your hexagons till you get to the center, okay? And all the way around. But having these marks here will make it more accurate for you. So you just use your outer edge here and move in. So you, instead of, instead of two inches, you could go in an inch all the way around, marking it. And you just keep going. So I'll show you on half of it, okay, what you're going to do. And then you could go in another inch. Just make it really simple. And that could be your design right here. Real simple, easy way to quilt it, but it'd be really nice. And then in this one right here, you could do the little loops. So you could start right here. And you could go like this. And just make a little design in the center. So there's many, many ways to quilt. Just decide what you want to do and go for it. Okay. But practice, practice, practice before you get to your quilts. Okay. So now what's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I did. I'm going to mark using, let's see, this color here, I think, my two inches, and mark all the way around. And just using my design, and then you're just gonna go around. But first of all, before you start quilting, there's a couple things that you can do, okay? Um, you can unthread the needle and practice. You can draw it on and keep drawing around it. Practice, practice. You can do both of those. So you could draw it on and then unthread the needle and go for it, okay? But to draw, do my design, what I'd want to do is, I'm just gonna draw it on and show you. So I'm gonna start here, go around and keep going. And this movement here, because you can't turn this, is going to help you as you're quilting because you're going to get these movements down and know that I'm coming down to this point and now I'm going to come out around and then loop over. I'm going to come out around and cross right here and come out around and cross. Just keep doing this over and over till you have that movement in mind. Okay, and then you can start your quilting. Then make your next line um, and go on and on and on and do what you need to do. Okay, so let me just change my foot really quick and let's put this 360 foot on because I really want to show you what it does really quick. And, and then I'll just let you get to it and get quilting. So I'm going to move this down. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to change your feet. Now, another thing that you could do is for your basting, you could use a different color thread so that you know what is your basting stitch and what is your quilting stitch and it'll make it that much easier for you. Just a rule of thumb, make sure it's a brighter color. Just use your really ugly threads that you never use and you want to use up. So I'm just going to change my foot here and what you do is I've got all my tools here so it makes it quick and easy. I'm going to take this off, put it where I can find it, because I'm going to be using it again. I'm going to take this foot off, and let me put this wonder foot on, okay? I'm going to put the wonder foot on, okay? And the needle needs to go in the down position, okay? That's the lowest point that the needle will be, and that's how you're going to set your height, okay? If you have it and you don't have your needle in a down position, you are going to get skip stitches because your foot's going to be um, positioned up too high. 
So make sure that you put your foot on, and notice I haven't put the screw on yet, but I'm going to put my needle in a down position. Now it's on. I'm going to put my hopping foot gauge right under that little wheel and position it so it's right underneath that rounded horseshoe shape that goes around the needle so you push it towards the needle as, as far as you can it's not going to let you go any further and then you're going to finger tighten it and then you're going to tighten it with your screwdriver with your island wrench okay so now it's set and now I can bring it up and I can bring it on. There we go. Okay. So now I'm just going to quickly go around this and show you how to use it. Now, if you want to use um, a ruler to help you stabilize it, do what works well for you. Okay, there's my threads. I'm just going to come up around. I just want to do this first. I wanted to show you all those others first. And then I'm going to start right here on this line. And if the ruler helps, use it. If it doesn't and it hinders you, don't. It's all up to you. And then I'm just going to move along. I'm going to move. From, notice I have my lines here. So I'm going to use those to help me as I'm moving across, okay? And I have my true grips on my ruler, okay? So they're gonna help stabilize things and my ruler base as well. So I'm just going to turn so I'm nice and straight to start out with and then I'm just gonna move from this point to this point, this point to this point and all the way around. So I'm just going to align so my lines are right here on the edge that pushes, makes sure that my needle is a quarter of an inch away. And then I'm, the first thing, I'm going to line my needle up over where I'm going to start. And I'm going to change my SPIs because I changed them to do my base stitch to show you the different ways to do it. So I want to turn it back up to 10. Okay, because I'm not doing a rounded design. I want to change it. I want to bring my threads up. This is one time where I do want to bring it up. Okay, so it's up here. I'm going to align my needle right there, and this is what you're going to do. You're going to make sure that it's right there, nice and straight, and we're going to move from this stitched base stitch to this one. And then I'm going to go around. I'm going to take it slow, everybody. So that's how I roll till I understand and get used to it. So just Take it slow and just keep going around until your needle gets to that point. Okay, then you're just going to turn it and you're going to go down around the other. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. And there you go. There's your stitch, okay? And then you'll take out all your base stitch and everything, and you'll have a beautiful block design. Then you're going to sew your design. You're going to change your foot and sew all your designs. Okay, so you can do it several different ways. You can do all your tacking down, and then you can do all your quilting. You can start quilting so you don't have to change your foot so often, but you saw how easy it is to change the feet. So don't let that hinder you or stop you from doing what you love. Um, next time, I'm going to show you a little bit of automation. Uh, I'm just going to go to town and get this all sewn up and tacked on and some designs done. I will show you how to make the design that I'm free motioning, and I will show you what I free motioned and what I'm going to do in the automation with the automation. There's so many different ways to quilt. Don't limit yourself. And let's explore some new opportunities next time with part three of extreme paper piecing. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi guys, 
welcome to Tuesdays with Grace. My name is Janessa. I am the assistant manager over the education team. No Carla today. She is out and about and traveling along with a lot of the other Grace company members on um, their road to California. We'll get to that in just a little bit. We have an exciting new thing happening this week. Um, but I wanted to just answer a few of the questions that I saw happening in the comments um, about some of the really cool feet that you, uh, Carla was using in today's video. Um, the first one you saw as she was doing the base stitch was from our perfect ruler kit. Um, it's really cool. It has three different feet. We've got the precision foot, the rolling foot, and the true track foot. So um, that's what she was using to baste. It's really amazing for all things ruler work. Um, if you've seen any videos that I've been a part of, I love ruler work um, because you can get things really nice and neat and exact. So that's what she was using. Um, you can go to the website to see more information about that. Um, the second foot she was using, I feel like I say it's my favorite all the time, but <laughs> this is another one of my favorite products that we have, um, and it is the 360 Wonderfoot. It's really cool because it has all of these different inserts that make stitching in the ditch really easy. Um, I really like it for different applique. It's a really wide foot, um, so you can see really clearly kind of everything that's happening um, as you're quilting. So you can see both of those on our website at graceframe.com. Um, I wanted to review just a few things and some of the great features that our new events platform, um, Tuesdays with Grace, has. So I'm going to take you over to our website to show you how to access that. So first things first is you're just going to go to graceframe.com. And every week you can scroll down and you'll see Tuesdays with Grace come learn with us. And so you can click on that and it's going to take you to the Tuesdays with Grace events platform. Um, there's a lot of really great things. Um, first, I want to show you just the event schedule. So here you can see what's coming up the following weeks. Um, so next week, we can see that it's going to be Extreme Paper Piecing Part 3, um, Automation or Ruler Work. So she's going to go a little more in depth um, using automation on that Extreme Paper Piecing one that she's doing. If you want to download the pattern for this particular project that she's doing, you can click right here and just click Download. Um, and that will give you that pattern that the education team has put together to help you complete your own extreme paper piecing quilt. But wait, there's more. <laughs> um, so some other really fun things that you can see on the events platform is the quilt show. And this is one of my favorites. Whenever I'm having a rough day, I love to just go and just take a gander through all the quilts that are being submitted. I love seeing things that everyone is creating. Um, so here are the different categories that you can submit your quilts to. Um, so you can click Inspired by Grace. So if you've done um, a quilt that was inspired by maybe one of Carla's projects or something that you've seen from one of the other festivals, um, you can submit those here. So we would click See Quilts. And look, we can see some of the amazing quilts that have been submitted by far. Oh, I love this. So Chinese Lanterns. Um, and this one was done by um, Janice Queen. So beautiful job, Janice. Love that. So. Um, like I said, there are a lot of different categories. We have a special category going this month um, that has to do with our promos that are happening. So this one are, is all quilts done on the 15 Kinique machine and some sort of hoop or cutie frame. So, oh, I love that. We can see these two different quilts done by Susan Munger and Cindy Rico. Hopefully I said that correct. Um, and you can see their beautiful quilts that they've done. So please go and submit your quilts. We love to see the things that you guys are working on. Um, some of the other categories are things like, um, like a quilting forum. Maybe you've got a quilt that you've pieced and you would love some advice on how should I quilt this? What ideas? What patterns do you guys have? Um, so here's how to go and do that. It's really easy to submit your quilts there. Um, some other features that you can see here on the Grace, um, Tuesdays with Grace platform is the watch it again. So maybe you missed last week's or you want to go see some previous weeks. You can really easily see all of those previous Tuesdays with Grace. Um, and you can also download um, the patterns that go along with it. So if I want to click here to the different feet for quilting, this one didn't have a pattern, but the education team created um, a hopping foot guide. And so you can click download on that and kind of print off that infographic that will help you understand all of the fantastic feet that Grace has to offer that you can use. So that is just a few of the great things that you can experience with um, the Tuesdays with Grace platform. But um, another one is the giveaways that we're tying to the Grace platform every month. So 
Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm allowed to say what the giveaways are for this following month, but I can tell you there are some coming soon. So make sure that you are registered on the events platform um, to, have, to be entered to win one of those giveaways. Okay, the next thing, and I mentioned it briefly, that a lot of our team members are currently in California for the Quilt Show Road to California. Um, and I wanted to show you how you can access. So I'm going to go back to graceframe.com and show you how to get to that. So I'm going to click over here to Grace on the Road, and I'm going to click on Grace on the Road, and then this will take me to the Grace on the Road homepage. You can register. I'm already registered, um, but you can click over here to register, um, and then you can set up um, notifications to notify you when that show is um, happening. So to click and see our schedule, you'll just click on event schedule. There's a few different ways you can get there and you'll see what's coming in one day and 21 hours. Um, so at the Road to California, they'll be kind of showing you around the quilt show. They'll be walking around to different booths um, and then they'll end at a demo. And as always, we love to give away um, lots of giveaways during our live events. So be sure to join um, that on Thursday. And that's how you can access that um, wonderful thing that is coming up. Okay, sorry, I'm doing a lot of talking here. Um, the next thing I wanted to briefly touch on are some of the promotions that we have going on this month. So Carla, at the beginning of the month, she did a demo on our 15 and the cutie in the hoop frame. And we have a promo that is happening with those wonderful products. Um, so we have um, matte pricing on our hoop frame and our cutie frame, and they come with a free light bar and an accessory pack um, comes with our 15 machine. So with the 15 machine, sorry, I'll give Brian a sec to hop on over to our 15 machine and the accessory pack that's coming with that. Um, with that, it's coming with the ruler base, just like what Carla was using today as she was doing her class. Um, it also comes with a couple different rulers. Um, it comes with the hopping foot kit, the super slider ruler, the slice ruler, the mini slide ruler, mini quilt clips, bobbins, and a pack of um, 18 MR needles. So really everything that you need to get started with the all things quilting. Um, and then we also have some really great specials going on with our light bars. So with our light bars, they are all 35% off. So the five foot luminous light station, um, it's normally $449.95, and right now it is $292. Um, our 10 foot light bar is usually um, $599.95, and right now it's $389. And the final light bar, our 12-foot light station, is usually $749.95, and right now it's $487. Um, I don't know if you have, if some of you guys, if you have light bars, please tell us what you think. I absolutely love, love, love mine. My sweet husband, before he had helped me create kind of a light station, my sewing room's in my basement, and it's really dark down there, especially at night. And um, bless his sweetheart, he, he did his best and I, I, it was good, it, it did the job. But as soon as I was able to get, um, I got the 10 foot light bar over my quilting station, oh my gosh, it really does make the biggest difference. And I'm about to get a five foot one to put over my piecing and cutting station. That's how much I love it. So those are just a few of our fantastic um, promos that are happening this month. For more information, you can go to graceframe.com and see um, how you can get access to some of those fantastic promotions. Um, the last thing I wanted to discuss is just what's coming next week. So I know I showed it on the platform, but next week we will be seeing part three of Carla's extreme paper piecing, and she'll be doing some automation and some ruler work on that quilt. So you don't wanna miss that. And of course, during our lives, we love, love, love giving things away. And I decided to pick one of my favorite products. I know I, I really do say that every time, but it truly is. I love, I really do love everything that we have here at the Grace Company. Um, so what I'm giving away is this lovely Master Cuttings Collection. So um, it comes with our ruler that has the track and guide system, a set of true grips, and then our 45 millimeter cutter. Um, if you haven't used True Cut before, it really does make such a difference with your cutting. I absolutely hated the cutting process because I could never cut straight. I was wasting tons of fabric. And as soon as I started using um, our True Cut cutting system, it really did make that process so much more enjoyable. Um, if you have wrist issues or anything like that, um, it's an ergonomic cutter that really helps um, facilitate a, a much more 
uh, user-friendly, easier, safer, and more accurate um, cutting process. So this is what we're giving away. And I have a question. Oh, Quilter's Combo. I oh, mean, I'm always mixing up the names. Quilter's Combo. Sorry, y'all. This is the Quilter's Combo <laughs> um, that we're giving away today. Um, and the question, ooh, I'm going to pull a question. So hopefully you're watching Carla's class. Which foot was she using? Ooh, yeah. Which foot was she using to do baste mode on her quilt? Which foot was she using? And that's how we're going to pick our giveaway winner. Let's see. Which foot was Carla using when she was doing the baste mode on her quilt today? Give everyone a minute or two to get their answers in. Sorry, we're pausing for dramatic effect as we see the answers coming in. All right, and I see that Brenda, Brenda Tomlinson. Scooch up, oh, one more up, there we go. Brenda Tomlinson, you are correct. It was the perfect ruler kit. Awesome, great job, Brenda. So you are the lucky winner of this lovely True Cut cutting system. All right, and then we'll do one more. Let's see from our, who else got it correct? Awesome. Sorry guys, we're just looking at everybody's answers here. Sorry guys, we got a lot of great answers in here. Give us just a second. <laughs> How about Mary Williams, right? Yep, there we go. Great job, Mary, congrats. So if you guys both will email melinda at graceframe.com melinda at graceframe.com and she email her and say that you won during our Tuesdays with Grace and she will um, help you guys get your prizes shipped out to you. Um, other than that, thank you so much for joining us here today at Tuesdays with Grace. We're so excited. Hopefully see you um, at Grace on the Road as you join us um, at Road to California and next week at Tuesdays with Grace. Um, thanks so much guys. Have a great week.